We ready, Jeff? Yeah, thanks for your patience. We should be live on Facebook now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's time again to start the Galton City Council committee meeting. And right now we're doing this by electronic means. So I got an order from the governor and we will take a vote uh, on this order from the governor and we'll also call roll call at the same time. So this I will read. Pursuant to Governor Lee Executive Order Number 16, that's Quentin Orders and the need to limit community spread of COVID-19, the February 23rd, 2021 Galton City Council meeting will be held by electronic means. The meeting will be live streamed to protect the public health, safety, and welfare of the council and the citizens of Gallatin. And you may join this meeting uh, by dialing 1-470-2509-352. Or 1470-381-2552 and enter webinar ID number 822-8779-5890. And at this time, I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Kittrell for the roll call and a vote uh, on this uh, electronic meeting. Kitchell, are you there? I am. Okay. Okay. Do we want a motion for an electronic vote? Or? Motion to approve an electronic. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Second by Councilman Fan. Uh, Ms. Kitchell, you ready? I am. Vice Mayor Fennell? Yes, and here. Councilman Alexander? Yes, and here. Councilman Fan? Yes, and here. Councilwoman George? Yes, and here. Councilman Hayes. Yes, and present. Councilwoman Love. Yes, and here. Councilman Overton. Yes, and present. We have a quorum and a say no <laughs> vote on electronic meeting. Thank you, Ms. Kittrell. Moving along, uh, it's approval of the minutes and there's none provided. So then we're gonna move down to public recognition. And I would like to ask Mayor Brown to uh, keep the minutes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, uh, Keep your comments to five minutes. Paige will be taking the time right there. And uh, I'd like to ask Jeff Hensel, if you will, to see who's in the audience that would like to speak under public recognition. And uh, please state your name and your address and limit to five minutes. Jeff. Very good, sir. Um, please use the raise your hand function. Um, if you're using a PC or the app, you'll see that at the bottom of your screen, you can mouse over the bottom of your screen, you'll see the raise your hand function. And um, we've got a few people who have already raised their hand. Let's start with Pascal Jovance, go ahead. Yeah, good evening all. Uh, Pascal Jovance, 1335 Long Little Pike. Uh, I'm surprised again to uh, see that the item uh, respectfully asked to be added to this council are not there um, and that the charter of the city are not followed. Again, uh, the charter say that all department heads and all other persons desiring to present any matter to the council committee shall notify the mayor in writing of the matters to be placed opposed upon the council committee agenda. Persons, if we go on the charter, on the definition, persons, it says the word person shall extend and be applied to associations, clubs, societies, firms, partnerships, and bodies, politic and corporate, as well as to individuals. I'm an individual, I'm a person, I'm following the charter, so uh, I still don't understand why. I'm pretty sure Susan did a lot of work on it and found a way to go around that. Um, but, you know, I'm just reading the charter and that's what it says. So you still don't want to talk about things that matters to a lot of people like me. So I'm still going to talk about it. Uh, let's talk again about the secondary gear of our firefighters. Um, I still think that these guys need to be taken care of and the secondary gear is important for their health. 
and the safety of our firefighters. We should buy it right now. The money, you know, I've been following you guys for a while. I've been seeing the, the report and the great audit we had said the city is on a good financial help. So why can't we put the money the firefighters need to buy secondary gear so we protect them from cancer and other bad things that can happen to them? That should not be happen. We should not be waiting for a grant. What's going to happen if we don't get the grant? That should be the other side. We should spend the money, and if we get the grant, reimburse the money. Um, we got a lot of money from the government. Where, where is that money? Oh, that money already got spent, and spent by the mayor um, on a bunch of things. Uh, I remember there were laptops and audio equipment. Uh, but again, when I go in the charter, I'm wondering why all the things who got bought didn't got presented to the council. Charter said that the mayor has virtually no administrative authority, cannot independently authorize the expenditure of municipal funds for any purpose. Sorry, that's not in the charter. That was an MTAS uh, comment on the question asked. So you guys use MTAS a lot. Um, that's what MTAS say. Another thing I find uh, really amazing is that um, we authorize city council persons to use a personal email address for city business. Um, I think that's not acceptable. Every city council should use a city email address. If they don't do that, um, I'm pretty sure the city doesn't have a way to safeguard information to be available for the public in case of request. I would like the IT department to uh, enlighten us on that. And the third thing I wanted to talk about is having the city put in place a social media policy. We're in a world where social media is a really important thing and the city has no social media policy and we see some city employees attacking all day long citizens on social media. That should not happen. So that would be great if something was looked at. But again, um, why are we not um, put money out for our firefighters? I think we should put our priority straight and, you know, Again, I'm listening to everything that's happening, and when I hear that, I still have 15 minutes, sir, 15 seconds. So um, I think that instead of spending money on resurfacing a parking lot with a private property, we should put that money to our firefighters. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. Okay, next we have uh, Dr. Saunders. Go ahead. Hello, I wanted to um, just say thank you to the, I guess it would be the street department. I'm not really sure, public utilities for uh, helping us during the recent snowstorm. Uh, although I was uh, shut in um, because our development is private and was not um, plowed. I understand that the streets of Gallatin were plowed very nicely. I have a family member who had to get out. And I really just wanted to give public recognition to the department responsible for helping the citizens of Gallatin during our uh, recent snowstorm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, I think we, we did have a phone caller. Just a reminder, if you're on uh, calling by phone, you raise your hand by hitting star nine. And for everyone else, you raise your hand by clicking the raise your hand button. We do have an additional person, Manny, go ahead. Uh, I also just want to thank the public works for um, last week um, during the snowstorm, keeping the, you know, roads clear. I work at the nursing home in Gallatin here. And I mean, getting to work and stuff, it made it so much easier. Um, also, the EMA helped us, you know, transport our nurses and techs and dietary staff to get there um, so that we can fill our duties. Um, so thank you all. Um, 
thank Public Works and thank you City Council for all y'all do and Mayor Page Brown. Appreciate it. Um, we do have a cell phone caller um, zero phone eight call ending zero in zero eight, eight five. Eight, eight, Go five. ahead. Go ahead. You'll have to uh, yes. oh, go, uh, ahead. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Yes, I called it. I was yes, just I calling in regards to the Twin Angels project. And uh, just wanted to voice my concern. Can, can, can I ask you to wait a second, I sir? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Jeff, uh, Jeff, we're getting okay, some reverb. Is there any guys here now? The echoing. I think you need to mute the mute. And then you put it. Oh, you uh, ain't on that for real. Look, no, how about this? I just did. Huh. the previous speaker. There you go. I'm sorry, sir. You may resume. I'm sorry. We also need to get the speaker's name and address, please. Yes, sir. What's your oh. name and your address? Yeah, my name is Scott Goodwin, and we're 592 Douglas Lane. Okay, Scott, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I appreciate it. I had it on speakerphone. I cut off. The um, I was calling in regards to the Twin Eagle, and I my concern is that road is extremely narrow, and uh, I just do not feel like that road is equipped to handle the additional traffic that would come from that. And I uh, just want to voice my concern and make sure that those things would need to be addressed before that's approved. In my opinion, I appreciate y'all giving that serious it. consideration to uh, protect Douglas Lane, but also the people in Twin Eagle, so this is being done responsibly. Thank you, Scott. Jeff, next call. Victoria, go ahead. You'll have to unmute yourself. There you okay. go. It's uh, Victoria Hagen, 599 Douglas Lane, Gallatin, Tennessee here. I'm calling about the uh, Twin Eagles expansion. Um, my concern is uh, I know that the city wants to um, annex in people that want to be annexed in. Um, Jones bought the land oh, a while back, and this is supposedly his only egress um, as a second entrance. He was told many years ago, I was Ms. Hagen, I think we lost you. The 500 that he currently has, um, and he did not do that. He bought more land. Uh, hoping to build another, oh, what, what's the number on that right now? 171 additional homes. Um, 171 additional homes, we're looking at double that for cars, um, dumping onto a county road that is 18 feet wide. And I did read all of his paperwork that has been submitted to you all in uh, the packet you received. And it said that... Um, Judy Harden stayed the Douglas Lane is 18 foot roadbed and her words exactly were, I think it's sufficient based on the traffic study that she was given. Well, that traffic study was done in March or the first part of April of 2020, which was the height of the COVID. Uh, myself being a, a, a bus driver here uh, for Sumner County, um, I know I travel this road four times a day being a bus driver and I didn't travel it at all that day or those days that this was going on because of COVID. I also know we have some uh, teachers and many other people that were working from home. So that traffic study, um, I don't believe is accurate in any sense of the word. Uh, the first time that it was brought before um, the planning commission in Gallatin, it was unanimously turned down uh, because of the dangerous um, conditions. The captain of the fire department there in Gallatin also stated that he was not happy with it. Also now reading some of the information in the packet you were all given, it says the, the captain says, the fire chief Williams states that um, the fire station is 2.5 miles away and it would take him five minutes to get to it, uh, to the entrance on Douglas Lane, which is more than the four minute minimum that is supposed to be. And the second fire station is nine minutes away. Uh, he states that he feels like there would need to be another fire station, that they don't have enough um, fire equipment or man out men. 
Um, the public works department indicated that the, um, the County Road Douglas Lane should be evaluated. Um, so I'm just feeling like there's an awful lot of big no's here on this plan. Um, you have twin eagles. Uh, the Bowles Farm now, and, and all of this, by the way, would come down Douglas Lane. Most people would make a left on 25 to go to 109 to make a right to go to 386 to get into Nashville or to get to Gallatin to work or to Hendersonville to work. They'd all go the same direction. So now we have Twin Eagles, which has 500 homes currently. You're going to have the Bowles Farm, which it looks like there's going to be 2,250 residential units there. Eagle Creek, um, there's the new, um, what you guys were talking about last night, the corner of 109 and 25, opposite of the Bowles, which is gonna be another development. Uh, Cumberland Point, which has already been annexed in and you're allowing 100 townhomes being there. And then you have Fairway Farms, which is also being built right there at the top of that crest of that hill and this is all one little area here that is being overrun with traffic. Um, and 25 is a two lane road to begin with. So I I'm just feeling like with all this extra traffic, the infrastructure is not there. These are either county or state roads. And the city, I feel, is um, allowing all this annexation in this building. And you're not looking at the whole picture. Um, I was told that, you know, when you own the land, you have a right to do what you want as it with it. It's not a right to get annexed into the city. I'm sorry. He bought it as county land. It ought to have to stay in county land and let him deal with the county and do it as it needs to be done because it's a county road. Ms. Hagen, we've got time called on you. Can you wrap it up shortly, please? Yeah, I just, uh, that's just how I feel. My husband's also here and he has something to say. If I need to lower my hand and then re-raise it, we'll do that. Let's do that, Miss Hagen, if you would, please. All right. So that's- Jeff, you got, Thank you very much. Jeff, okay. you got somebody else in line? Actually, we do okay. not. So we, so we can back up to Mr. Hagen, correct? Correct. Okay, Mr. Hagen. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll have to- They'll have to unmute you. Are, are you. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh, go ahead, Jack. Uh, my name is Jack Hagen. I live at uh, 599 Douglas Lane also. The last two times that you guys have met over this, once with the planning committee, once with the city council, you deferred it to the county. That's the proper place for this. Nothing's changed. It's the same narrow road. And the only thing that's changed has been an election. And I happen to know that uh, Randy Jones was kind enough to donate a lot of money to some of you council members. You know who you are, and I know who you are too. But that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Okay, TJ Posey. Mr. Have Posey, to, can you hear? You have to unmute yourself, Mr. Posey. We still can't hear you. You'll have to unmute yourself. Hello. Ms. We can Posey? hear you, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yeah, would you state your name and your address, please? Yes, this is Thelma Posey at 1540 Woods Ferry Road. And I've talked to Mr. Fennell before about this. Um, yeah, as you know, they're putting in Woods crossing right behind my house, behind our property. My, our piece of land, this house was built in 1947. It's part of the Kirkpatrick farm. And when they put this little house down here, it was not really meant to take on any changes to the land around here. Otherwise it's gonna be underwater. We, it sits in the valley, right on the little creek. The creek is less than 20 foot from my bedroom window. When the water gets up, which it does occasionally on heavy rains, it's 10 foot from my bedroom window with, and it flows very heavily because it catches all the water from all these hills around here. Paul Way across the street, the city flooded him out several years ago and he floods every year. 
his flood water comes across the road into our yard and into our creek. So we're in pretty grave danger anyway of flooding. And uh, like I said, when the Kirkpatrick's put this little house down here, it was not meant to withstand any land changes around here. And I know that there's a major sewer line going through the front of this property uh, that they're trying to connect to. But there's people all around here that's got property that they could go through and not put them in danger as much as they are us. Mr. Kirkpatrick, if he was in his right mind, we all know he's sick. I've been talking to him because we've been neighbors for 20 years. But I have nothing else that I can do except reach out to y'all and to ask them, please, to move that line somewhere else. It will be less than 40 foot from my house where, where they've got it marked. Mrs. Goodall told me that they would make it 50 foot or more because they had to give it at least 30 foot for an easement. And I thought she meant they were going to add on 50 to that. Well, I was wrong. So now it's going to be less than 40 foot from my house. And it's really going to mess up everything around here water-wise. Hmm. Okay. I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't know how else to say it any better, except they're putting me in grave danger. And I'm trying to what way I can to make them do something else about it. Any questions? No, ma'am. We're just taking your comments under advisement. But thank you very much, Ms. Posey. Okay. Now, like I said, I, there's a lot of neighbors around here that don't like Woods Crossing going in over here and disturbing our neighborhood anyway. And under, I know they're trying to get to that main sewer line down there. But, you know, we're the lowest house on this street. Why do they have to come and infringe on our territory? Mr. Kirkpatrick, I'm sure if he could think right, he would say you could go to the other side of his property. He's got property all down this street. And other people do that, you know, might would not be in as much danger as we're in. But we have had to do a lot of work around here just to get the water to keep sitting, keep from sitting underneath our house coming off the hills. Okay, well, I'd appreciate it if y'all can do anything about that or get back with me, let me know something or give me any kind of words of encouragement. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Posey. Mr. Henschel. Uh, yes, uh, Chris Osborne, go ahead. Yes, uh, I'm Chris Osborne, 620 Douglas Lane. Um, I'm again, reiterating how we do not agree with the new development connecting into Douglas Lane just because of the traffic patterns and the um, how how or how the wide the roads are not to support anything like that. Um, I think it should go to the county, not to the city, to be advised if they allow it or not. Um, but. I, I know this has been turned down multiple times in this council, and I think we should continue to do that and let him find a different way of doing this without affecting all these families on Douglas Lane. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Osborne. Mr. Hansel? That appears to be everyone who's raised their hand. Let me just double check panelists. And that is everyone who's raised their hand. Okay, thank you very much. Moving along now, we're into our regular agenda. Item number one, this is a adoption comment. of a plan service. Mayor's comment. Oh, I am so sorry, Mayor. That's okay. All right, jump in there. That's okay. Um, I had had an earlier request from a department head to move up a couple of items, but that was Chief Williams, and I don't think he's here anyway, so I think we can keep them where they are on the agenda. Um, someone from the fire department jump in if I'm wrong about that. I see um, Chief Woodward here, so I assume that he's going to be here for the meeting. And I'm sure he'd love to spend the whole meeting with us, so thank you. Um, the thing that I really want to say is I want to thank our department heads and our employees who really worked hard last week. 
in spite of the weather to make sure that our citizens, our city, and our employees were taken care of. Um, we did have some people out of work due to the weather, but departments like our planning department and our finance department, and certainly police and fire and public works um, and others, I should not, I probably shouldn't have um, even called out those because I don't wanna leave anyone out. Public utilities is working. And then everybody had people that were working in different capacities within their department. But um, our finance department, they came in on the worst day, um, thanks to our finance director who played chauffeur to make sure that our employees got paid. And um, our public works department, oh my goodness, they worked double to 12 hour shifts around the clock, um, clearing streets and, and taking care of our roads. Um, getting rid of the ice was very challenging. Um, it's not just about clearing snow from the road. And so these folks were working really hard to do that. I really appreciate um, the people under public comment that mentioned them this evening. I think that um, they really appreciate the recognition of our citizens. And I also wanna say that on social media, there was some thread where people were so complimentary of those workers. And so um, I appreciate our citizens recognizing their efforts as well. So good job to everybody who worked last week and hopefully it's the last bad weather of the winter. Then we can look forward to spring. So um, I think that's it under Mayor's comments. I do have some items under other business this evening, but that's it. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry to jump in front of you. I apologize. So now we're gonna go down to the regular agenda and uh, Bill McCord, this is adoption of plan of services on Douglas Lane. Bill. Okay, um, let me do a little screen sharing here. Uh, is that visible to each, each, each of you? Yes. yes. Okay, great, okay. Uh, we have several items tonight. The first three items are kind of related and they involve the request for annexation and plan of service and a rezoning of a 59 acre parcel of land located adjacent to Twin Eagle subdivision. Uh, the property, this aerial photograph shows an outline of the 59 acres that the applicant is requesting a uh, annexation petition, submitted an annexation petition and plan of service and also request to rezone the property from county's rural residential zoning classification to the city of a Gallatin mixed use designation. The rest of the Twin Eagle subdivision is also zoned MU, mixed use. The, uh, oop, went too quick. <clears throat> the Twin Eagle subdivision has been developed in several phases and is annexed at different times. Uh, the southerly portion adjacent to Red River Road and Highway 109, generally shown in the green and the blue pattern on this screen. Uh, in the 20, 2006, 2008 to 2013, phases six through 12 were developed and that's shown in the orange pattern there adjacent to Highway 109. All of these fact, different phases extend through and obtain access to uh, Highway 25 through Wildcat Run. And the last phase that was approved and is under development now, partially half constructed is phase 14, which is kind of in the mauve colored area here uh, to the west of phases six through 12. And so the applicant is asking for annexation of the 59 acres to the north of of phase 14 into the west of phases 12 and 11. It also has access to and adjacent to Douglas Lane, which it's kind of a little difficult to see maybe on this aerial photograph, but it's this dark line here that extends uh, meanders uh, up from Red River Road up to uh, Douglas Lane and then extends over back to Old Douglas Lane and uh, so it makes a, essentially a loop on the west side of Highway 109. So the applicant uh, also has a request for zoning, uh, rezoning with a preliminary master development plan again to MU. They had submitted an application last year and um, their master plan only showed the, essentially the first part of phase 15 that they wanted to develop. 
at that time, uh, engineering as well as planning had concerns about how they were designing that. And because we were pretty insistent that they provide access to an alternative access, which would provide two ways to in and out of Twin Eagles subdivision, which will contain about close to 500 units so that they would have access to uh, Douglas Lane and have an additional way in and out of the subdivision. So, but the applicant um, uh, deferred that action and with, essentially withdrew it and resubmitted an application uh, showing all of the phase and subphases, if you will, of section 15 or phase 15. And in this case, they're breaking it in, they're proposing to break it into six subphases. And this would eventually also include access to Douglas Lane on the west side of the property. Their proposal was to develop phase, the last phase of phase 15 uh, with access to Douglas Lane at the end of the project, whereas staff supported that being part of phase one. So the um, plan is basically the same as uh, what was submitted earlier, other than they're showing now all of the lots. So we have 171 proposed single family lots, uh, similar in size and design of what was constructed or has been constructed in Twin Eagles. There was a planning commission meeting on this back in January, and there was a, an extensive public comment after receiving public comment and discussion, the Planning Commission recommended not to annex and to not approve the master development plan. Uh, city staff has recommended approval at the time that phase 14 was considered for approval and was approved by the council. It was clearly conveyed to the council that it, should there be another phase that that would be the uh, phase 15 that that when their uh, second connection would be required. So it's uh, been well uh, known that, that uh, their next phase would be uh, opportunity to provide for that connection. We do, as was mentioned by one of the uh, persons who spoke earlier, we did receive a letter and it's including your agenda package from the county road superintendent that uh, describes the conditions of the road. It's uh, reflected in the traffic study and perhaps uh, Mr. Tuttle might want to mention something about that. Uh, they received that, uh, indicating that the roadway width is 18 feet. Uh, we're talking about Douglas Lane. So uh, either way, because of that uh, and public comment from uh, to the Planning Commission, uh, the Planning Commission did not recommend for uh, that annexation or that zoning. Now, uh, the applicant's representative may be on the line and may want to uh, do a presentation of their own. There, as I mentioned, the, the housing stock, when this is a typical housing that they've built in Twin Eagles would be the same in this next phase. So I'll be glad to answer any questions you have pertaining to this request. Guys, anybody like to say anything? I don't have any questions, but during, I mean, there was quite a bit of discussion about this during the planning com commission meetings and it was decided that it, that road was not, not viable for um, a subdivision this size to be uh, let out on. Uh, Mr. McCord said is with that the, Douglas Lane meanders. Well, it meanders and you can tell easily from that line with some 90 degree curves there too. And I, 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 I'm sorry that Mr. Jones didn't put in another exit a long time ago, but I don't really think we need to keep on adding more homes and annexing and, um, and when this is already a problem. And shown. Go ahead, Craig. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, and and I, I kind of agree with Linda. I mean, I don't think the subdivision needs to go out onto Douglas Lane. I don't, I don't disagree with the subdivision, but I don't think it the access on Douglas Lane is what bothers me because you put that much traffic, and it and it will be traffic. People going to use the shortest route, shortest way to get out. 
I, you know, I, I travel that road a lot. I ride bikes on that road. It's a narrow road. 18 feet might be the widest spot in the whole road, but I guarantee you, you go out there and measure other places, it's probably less than 18 feet. I just cannot see them putting that much traffic out there onto Douglas Lane. Um, is it Andy on here with us? Can I ask him a question? Yes. Andy Lee, are you there? I'm here. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Okay. Let yes, me, sir. I'm here. Let me ask you a question. All right. Yes, sir. What if, you know, and I can't point it with my pointer here, but anyway, there's probably in that little street going down to Douglas Lane, how many lots are right there on that one section? Um, 25? I'm, I'm going to, I'm maybe, maybe less. What if, what if they cut that off right there, took that and stopped the subdivision right there? Would that be an option and didn't have that other 25 houses going to Douglas Plain? Councilman Hayes, I, I feel like that anything would be an option right here for the developer. I don't know I mean, how staff would, would like that particular option, but um, I'm not, I don't know if Mr. Jones would be entirely disagreeable to that because. Yeah, I mean, know, I mean, I guess my thing is just, you know, if you cut that off, they're still going to have their, I guess they've got, I don't know how many houses that'll take off, but they still got the two or three exits on or, or entrances on to 25. Um, and I know you're not going to have that access to Douglas Lane, but, you know, I just, I don't think Douglas Lane can handle that kind of traffic. And, and let's face it, until something major develops out there, if anything ever does, the county's not going to do anything with that road. So that no, would sir, be, I, yeah. yeah, I mean, you, I, everybody agrees with that. But I mean, would that be an option? Is that something we could look at? I mean, and I don't know if the city council's in agreement with that or not. But if we cut that arm off right there, stop the subdivision right there, and I don't know. I mean, I guess he's already bought that property, Randy and Ron, but if they could go in, I don't know if they want to sell that or what, or do whatever they want to do with it. But Mr. Hayes, I'll speak up for that. I represent people in, in, in Twin Eagles, and, and I'm not for that at all because I have to represent the people in Twin Eagles. Those folks have to have a way to get out the back of that subdivision if something happens, and I have to protect them. Uh, you know, we've asked we've asked Mr. Jones years and years that if you know when you when you expand the subdivision to find another way out, and he bought the property to do that. And I understand the folks on Douglas Lane don't want traffic. You're not going to have that much traffic going out to Douglas Lane, but I have to protect the people in Twin Eagles. We have to have another way to get out of that in the back of that subdivision. So it's it's not too smart, and I don't think any other subdivision anywhere else you would want this many houses and not a way to get out the back of your subdivision if you had an if you had an emergency and somebody had to get out. So I wouldn't support it. I'm just one person, but I wouldn't support it unless there's an exit to get out the back of it. I just feel like they should have thought of this a long time ago before we put hundreds and hundreds in there. And well they did think about it. The planning commission once told them they had to buy it to go out the back of it. How long ago was that? They, Mr. McCord, y'all can answer that, but y'all been telling them that for years, haven't you? Uh, when phase 14 came in, that was about three years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> and if I may jump in here, if, if, if not, then you just tell me no. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah. So everyone knows back, I, and, and Mayor Brown or Sean, any of you guys have been around longer than I have can tell me, back when the Hatton track, not just the Hatton track extension to 109 was considered, but there was a loop that was considered at one time to go through Twin Eagles all the way around to 386, or or I think Nick was around two at this time. And I talked to, to Randy and Ron about that uh, because it was brought up at Planning Commission. And it was stated at Planning Commission that Randy had an opportunity to connect the Hatton track. Um, I'd like to clarify that on Randy's behalf. So back when this was being considered, Mr. Jones was asked to reserve a thousand foot right of way through his property for the potential Hatton track extension. 
And so as a developer and someone who makes their livelihood off building homes, they were asked to put their development on hold and reserve a thousand foot strip for an extension that may or may not have ever happened. And at that time, you know, Randy was against it. And, you know, he just couldn't put his, his livelihood on hold for something that may or may not happen. And they, I believe Ron even served on an advisory committee for this hat and track loop. Uh, but Randy has never had an opportunity to connect to the flyover that's being built right now. He would have been able to connect to hat and track had it been extended, but it was never extended. And, and yes, he was against it, but he was against it because he was being asked to, to hold off on his, you know, I don't think anybody on this planning commission or, or city council or myself, either one would say, Hey Andy, you know, why don't you just stop working for about five or 10 years and then and cr crank back up if, if something big happens. So that's their perspective. Uh, we have in phases eight and, and 10 and 11 and 12 stubbed out to the Duncan property. Our only option for a second entrance has only been Douglas in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Andy. Um, yes. Mayor, you have a comment? I was just going to say, he, he was asking you and I um, what we remembered, and that actually predates us. I was going to suggest that you ask Nick Perfect. to speak on that because I, I've always heard that there was an opportunity for a connection at some point, but I wasn't and, and I can that it was to Hatton track. So I, can, I would I like can, to get a, a, um, a concrete answer to that. I can speak on this too, because I've been around probably longer than anybody on the council, John Alexander too. We set up a committee, okay, back when Joanne was mayor, probably her first term. And that was back when we were going to look at doing Hatton track all the way across, all the way over to, oh gosh, I can't remember where, but what we decided was at that time, not me, because I was not on a committee, but the funds were not there to do that. So that had a lot to do with it was the funding part of it, because that road was going to continue all the way across through the property. And I can't remember where it was going to go to. Really quick. Do what? Greenlee extension. Yeah. Yeah. Intended yeah. To connect back in with Greenlee. Right. right Correct. So, but the funding was not there. So that's, that kind of killed that deal right there. So that kind of, that sums that up, but that's been many, many, many years ago. Mr. Pinnell, I mean, the reality is whether this develops in the city, whether it develops in the county, they have access to Douglas Lane. And, and, and also if it develops in the county, they're still going to ask to be hooked onto the subdivision. They're still going to get city water and city sewers because it's, it's contiguous with the city. So they're still going to get city services uh, as far as being able to get hooked onto the city uh, sewer system and, and, uh, and, and water. So they're going to get to Douglas Lane no matter what. So well, yeah, you, do, have, you, you, know have a few, you have a few less houses, but 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 you you can't landlock. It's a state law. You can't landlock them from from getting out on Douglas Lane. Is Nick Tall here? Nick. Yes, sir. I'm present. Hey, uh, I want to uh, further the conversation on what Councilman Overton just spoke of. What Councilman Overton seems like he's saying is that even if this de development went through the county, then you would require that development to hook into Twin Eagles. Is that correct? Are you saying if they chose not to uh, be annexed and, and just went the route of the county um, approval process for a subdivision? Yes, if they put that what they can build through the county's regulations in place They'll have more con uh, connectivity to Douglas Lane, but also you would require them to hook into Twin Eagles development? Well, if it's approved in the county, we really don't have any say so at all as to what happens. Now, they, That's right. they could, um, I, I don't see that there would be an issue with them actually connecting to um the stubbed roads that are um stubbed out from the, the existing twin eagles development um i don't think we would stop them from doing that uh, but they they can plan the road network however they want to if it goes through the county and we really wouldn't have a say but nick i guess what he's saying is that the county could still turn them down from accessing douglas lane right 
that that would be the county's decision and that's what i thought see jimmy yeah. was saying that, that you were saying that yeah they're gonna have to connect to the road regardless and they're not i, I think they would have i think they would have the options to connect yeah. to either the city street or the county road douglas lane now, right. can you let can you landlock a piece of property um they they will have to i mean they have access now for what they're doing so whenever they come through with a plan like they're doing right now with the request of annexation, uh, the city of Gallatin would need to come up with, uh, and in this case, we're suggesting that they um, connect to both the existing city streets that are stubbed out and Douglas Lane, uh, but there, there has to be some kind of access provided. So I, at what you know, point does this, does, is there, does there have to be two ways in and out how many houses at what point and why when we got to that point was it still being approved why didn't then somebody say no you can't do any more because we don't have an, we don't have another way to get out so we don't have a regulation uh, that uh, requires you know once it gets to a, a x number of units that you have to have multiple connections um, I, I brought this up last time. Uh, there, there is something within um, one of the appendices of the fire code, which the city has not adopted because uh, these, these codes are very restrictive and prohibitive, but it's there as guidance. Um, and that number is 30 units uh, that you're supposed to have a secondary access. Um, obviously, you know, we, we don't see that um, in, in our normal development, uh, but uh, I think we're way, way out of whack here with allowing over 500 units with only one way in and one way out. Uh, and, and that's why the staff has been consistent in its recommendation of having this um, secondary access uh, to Douglas Lane, understanding that it is narrow, um, but it does meet the minimum county standards for roadway. Um, and, and I guess it, uh, from a fire apparatus access uh, roadway, it is uh, just a little bit narrow uh, for for that particular purpose, uh, but it does serve other emergency access uh, capabilities. Um, a fire apparatus access road should be 20 feet wide according to the fire code. And so Douglas Lane is um, doesn't meet that particular requirement uh, either, so. Nick, would it be in your professional uh, opinion that, uh, as Mr. Hayes said, to close this road off? Uh, you know, my my opinion had, and, and recommendation since before we allowed uh, phase 14 was that we needed to have a secondary access. Right. And we've been talking about that, like you said, Mr. Overton, for, uh, for years. And really, it was even beyond the, the three three years ago uh, that phase 14 came in, we were, we've been talking about this for a long time. Um, and, and I wasn't in uh, all the, the discussions and all the rooms uh, where Mr. Jones and uh, maybe our previous mayor, Joanne Graves, um, about the connectivity and the Albert Gallatin slash Hat and Track extension. Um, so I don't, I don't know uh, all the story there and, and why. Uh, there wasn't more movement. I think that I think both parties had a priority and um, they didn't really uh, work together to uh, meet in the middle because um, I, I would have loved to have seen just simply a connection to uh, the the end of where we're, we're finishing our project that Albert Gallatin Avenue where yeah. Twin Eagles was would just tie right into that that interchange. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure why that that really wasn't discuss much or fleshed out uh, but we're we're beyond that at this point and i think as it's already been said douglas lane is really the only option um and and i don't think it's um just a question of whether or not you know these additional 170 units are added i, I think it's really we already have nearly 500 units that are already approved and being built within the existing phases one through 14. And so uh, it's not just a, a question of whether or not 
we need to be paying attention to what's happening here in phase 15 and whether those particular residents need a way in and out. It's really all the existing ones, which is what Council Norberton's already suggested. Um, you know, I, I wish that this connection to Douglas Lane was a little bit further south and uh, maybe that becomes a, an option at some point later if the Twin Eagles development continues to develop because uh, there does appear to be more vacant land that um, has been stubbed out to by the existing Twin Eagles development. And so maybe that becomes a more of a reality sometime um, in the future. But, um, you know, right now, I guess this is our only option. Um, so. Mr. Camille, I'll make a motion we move it on to council. I got a motion to uh, move it on to council. Do I hear a second? A I'll second. second. We got a second by uh, Miss Elaine, Eileen George. I'm sorry. Um, any more discussion? I still, I still would like to see them take a look at maybe um, uh, chopping it off right there with no access to Douglas Lane. But that's just my thought, Andy. I mean, I would like to see y'all take a look at that. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Hayes, I, I want to point out to you and the rest of the council that the county adopted a new zoning resolution back in July. And all of the properties up and down Douglas Lane are zoned rural residential. So they can be broken up into 40,000 square foot lots. All, all of those properties that are fronting on Douglas Lane can be developed and add traffic to Douglas Lane. Some, there's been, uh, I forgot how many homes that have been built. Uh, I did a count on that. I think there were like about 15 or so new homes that have been built in there in the last five or six years. And they're continuing to slowly build homes, but a lot of that property can be subdivided in the county into 40,000 square foot lots all up and down Correct. Douglas Lane and to add traffic to Douglas Lane. Yeah, I understand that, but, but we're doing this as a city, so I totally understand what you're talking about, Bill. Okay. I got you. Andy, are you still there, Mr. Leith? Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I want to add on to what Bill McFord said, and I certainly know, I think you guys have got a plan for this to happen in the county. I know that if Mr. Jones buys his property, uh, Ron and uh, his brother, Randy, they're not gonna just sit there and look at it as being a field. What are they able to do in the county and what impact would that put on the road with this particular development if it was to go into county? Yes, sir. Well, as, as Nick elaborated on during his presentation, of course, all that would have to be approved by the County Planning Commission. And I just left the County Planning Commission actually I'm still in my truck from that meeting where we had a 90 acre subdivision in the northern part of the county. Um, a little bit different situation than this. This is 60 acres. Uh, you know, they're going to want something very similar to what Gallatin is going to want in regards to sidewalks, curb streets, things like that. Um, the county our standard in the county all along has been 18 foot wide roads. And I've developed a lot of lots in the county over the last two years or designed a lot of lots. And so 18 foot has typically been their rule of thumb. If it's 18 foot wide, okay. If it's not, then we make improvements. Um, we have submitted the traffic study to Miss Judy um, on this particular development and you all have seen her response. So I feel like that we would be able to develop this under the county zoning um, and, and be able to get through. Now, as Jim, Mr. Overton said, it's going to be some less lots than what we would get under Gallatin zoning, but we still will be connecting Twin Eagles to Douglas. I feel like, and I, I can't speak for the county, but I'm speaking from my personal experiences of working here for the last 15 years. I feel like the county would want us to connect to the city streets for the same reasons Gallatin staff wants us to connect to Douglas. Uh, you know, regardless of how many lots we built, regardless of what we did on that 60 acres, but the county is going to want the connectivity just like the city wants to connect, the city staff wants the connectivity. Uh, so maybe phase 15 is not as, is not as many lots, but the remainder of Twin Eagles would still have access to Douglas through phase 15. 
So Does that answer your question? Yes, your professional opinion is that no matter what one day, this is going to connect. It's going to connect, yes, sir. I mean, it's going to connect one day. And I feel like right now it could connect to Douglas without making improvements based on what we have done in other parts of the county in similar situations. Mm -hmm. Now, are we going to get the same density? I'm not going to lie to you. No, we're not. Um, but we would still get the connectivity. Okay. Thank you, Andy. Would anyone of us like to say anything before we take the vote? Uh, I'll say something, Sean, if you don't mind. Go ahead, Councilman Fan. I've kind of, the last few days, drove around some of Mr. Jones' previous subdivisions, and I'd just like to say that he's created a lot of jobs and opportunity and a lot of development in some of the counties, in particular Gallatin and Fuel. Some of the subdivisions are older now, but I think he puts a pretty good product together. And I think the houses he's putting here is what we're going to have a need for in the future, which is something that is reasonably priced. Of course, that's a matter of opinion to some people, I'm sure. But I think it's the price range that we're going to need in the future. Considering that the, the uh, traffic report, which it seemed to be okay according to our uh, county, I'm going to support this uh, connectivity because I think it's the right thing to do for the majority of the people. Can I say something, Sean? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Councilman. I, I, I totally agree with you, Mr. Fan, 100%. I definitely like all the connectivity that I could that I can must it up. And I certainly wouldn't want to cut that arm off and, and put a stop there. I definitely think we need to make that connect, connectivity as well. And I think uh, in the future, uh, you know, whether it be more or not, but we definitely need to do it now, I think. And I, and I support it as well. And Sean? Um, yes, sir, go ahead, Craig. I don't have a problem with the development whatsoever. It's just the connectivity to the road. I just think it's going on to a road that cannot handle the extra traffic right now. And that's just my thoughts. I mean, no problem with the development at all. I don't think he, I think he builds a great product. And, you know, I, I agree with Steve. But I just, I, I think the connectivity is not the right time, right place right now. So you want to put the people in Twin Eagles in jeopardy, but not giving them a way to get out if something happens in there? I don't think it's Craig doing that. I think it's already been done. <laughs> and now we're just trying to backtrack and find a way for that to happen. And it's not a good way to do it. I, I'm, I agree with Craig. On, I think, I mean, Twin Eagles is, fi is a fine subdivision. I just don't know. I, I know that it's not a good access road to put a lot of people out on well we we all know that randy jones has done well in this community and and, and built a very fine house him and his brother and uh, we all know that this is a tough tough decision for all of us to make but one thing i'd like to say is um the veiled assertion that we're benefit developments in exchange for campaign money is offensive and just plain wrong it's just, and, uh, I can't believe anybody would even ask that question or, or mention that. Over two hundred fifty dollars. But 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 Sean, that, that's just politics. You know, we 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 are. Uh, I know John D. And we're, I appreciate we're you. We are we are responsible to do a job. And I resent it. There, there's going to be some plus and minus in every decision you make. In every decision you make, you're not going to be able to please everybody. So let's call this for let's call it to a vote. Now, I would like to make one more comment. And this Go is ahead, going, back, going back to what Craig, I, I agree with I agree with everybody here in, in some form or fashion. And this would be a question for the developer. Would it be uh, possible to put a, a road through with a crash gate? And we keep talking about emergencies with a crash gate and limit the amount of people that can use Douglas Lane. I, since you asked about the developer, Councilman Fan, I, I can say from our point of view, we're all for that. But I don't <laughs> think that some of the city department heads were in favor of that. I, I think that's been brought up in the past. And specifically, I, I think Chief Williams was against it himself. With a crash gate, he was against it? 
He was in a different subdivision, but I mean, I would be good with that too. And maybe, I don't know since Chief Williams isn't here, but he said himself, it's not safe for his, his um, apparatus to come to um, go down Douglas Lane. Maybe he would think it was safer to have a crash, a crash gate there and just use it in an emergency situation. One, one, thing, one thing I want to say is, is if it's not safe, why well, we got school buses going up and down it. Exactly. Exactly. We don't have 500 more cars going out on it at the same time, though. Approximately how many houses would use that road with a crash gate? According to Linda, five well, cars. I, 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 just, I just think that there was kind no, of. No, no, I don't think y'all understand my question. I'm thinking about putting a crash gate not at Douglas Lane. I'm talking about back toward the subdivision itself where part of them would have to use Douglas Lane to enter and exit. And the other part would use what they're the existing road now that they're going in and out of. The crash gate would let someone in an emergency situation go on through. So you mean something like a gated community for part of it? Well, I wouldn't call it gated. I mean, if you're in an emergency situation, you're gonna run your car through it or your truck or whatever anyway. What I'm trying to do is split up the traffic count. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just throwing that out there and see if it's a possibility. I've already stated that I'm going to vote for this because I think it's the right thing to do. I'm just trying to meet people in the middle of the road here. Andy, did, did the traffic study show how many cars would probably go to Douglas Lane? It, it did, Councilman, but at the end of the day, I, I don't want to try to mislead anyone. Those are estimates, and um, they're good faith estimates, but they're still That's estimates. That's right. And and Nick could concur with that or disagree as the city's engineer, but you know, without having those houses built out and actually counting on a typical day, that's right. You don't know that we're person. only we're only estimating, but we don't estimate there to be a large number using Douglas because it's going to be more convenient for the the bulk of the subdivision to go out Wildcat. That's right. Now that I, I know that there was some question about the traffic study from some public comments being during COVID times, those those traffic numbers were adjusted for the COVID. They they were looked at historical data and things like that to make sure that those low counts were beefed up to account for the, the decrease in traffic. So COVID was taken into account with the traffic study. Um, but at the same time, they're just estimates as to what would be using Douglas. And it's, it's not going to be what we what I would consider a large number of vehicles, but that's that's a that's from my perspective. Thank you. Okay, Sean, I want to call for the question. We were call for the question, Ms. Kittrell. Vice Mayor Finnell. Abstain. Mm. Councilman Alexander. Yes. Councilman Fan. Yes. Councilwoman <clears throat> George. I would like to say first that I have also received um, threatening messages about my receiving campaign funds. Uh, I did receive campaign funds, but it would never jeopardize my vote or my credibility um, by $200. So I can assure you that um, this is not going to be uh, something that I appreciate from the public, in addition to being called a corrupt person. And um, my integrity is much more important to me, but I will vote yes. Councilman Hayes? No. Councilwoman Love? No. Councilman Overton? Yes. Four yeses, two noes, and one abstention. Thank you, uh, Ms. Kittrell. Uh, that takes care of one, two, and three, right, Ms. McCauley? We're just moving it up to council. Well, it, depend, it depends on what the motion was. If the motion was for all three, then it takes care of, for all, of all three. You mean that? Motion was for all three. Okay, there we go. All right, guys, moving along to item number four. Uh, Bill McCord, this is a discussion of findings of an annexation study. Mr. McCord.
Okay, hey, council members, this uh, is a presentation on the findings of an annexation study for the Woods Crossing Project, <clears throat> which is on Woods Ferry Road, just south of Nichols Lane on the west side of the road. It's 31 acre annexation and the, pro the development will be a single family residential neighborhood on 30, uh, about almost 36 acres. So uh, in a nutshell, and I don't want to get into too many details, there's the 36 acres. Parts of it are already in the city. The easterly portion is already in the city and there's a house on uh, one of the lot on the one of the parcels and the bulk of the, uh, the westerly portion will be developed in the subdivision as well as parts of the eastern portion. And they'll be removing the home that's on there. But uh, in a nutshell, the uh, feasibility study was done and is indicating that the uh, single family project would be a net benefit to the city. And that's described in your agenda report. So um, just one for, provide that information uh, in a 10 year time period, it'd be about um, $2.3 million in revenue that would be realized and about the same amount of expenditure. So it's essentially a break even proposal. And, and that's usually uh, what you're gonna see with uh, residential development. Okay. There's no recommendation Linda, or a vote that would come into into this. So, uh, okay, Linda, you got a question? Uh, next month, next week. Yeah, I, I was going to ask Nick to if he could if he could address that that callers. I think Miss Posey was her name. Is concerns about that flooding in that area is? Do you have you is that being considered? Do you know anything about it, Nick or? Councilwoman Love, I uh, hate to jump in there, but is there a representative for Goodall Road here? Yeah, that's not something that's on our agenda tonight, so I don't know that we should be discussing it. What's yeah, that's what I'm going to say. It's not on there tonight. Okay. What? What's not? I thought this was, would, I thought Woods Crossing was what she was calling about, I mean, what she, the lady had called about and what we were talking about. Go ahead, Mayor. About the, she was asking about some drainage issues along a creeks that flow through that area. So this is just about the annexation study and the feasibility and the revenues that and expend, projected expenditures if I mean, the I think, was developed. I mean, I think you can discuss it, but I think that you need to, you know, Make have a, some representation here. Or, no, no, no. Or make a motion to consider it, I think would be appropriate. I, I should defer to Ms. High McCauley. I always get myself in trouble when I start trying to give procedural advice. Ms. McCauley? Well, the, I guess we really are just talking about the annexation. I do think that you can talk about the flooding if you want to, it's not actually a part of the annexation. So it probably would be more proper to um, make a motion, but you can discuss it tonight. Well, this will come back up where we would, where it would be more appropriate at another time. I'm sure it will come back up, Miss Love. I, I I know okay. for a fact it will. All right. Just, well, uh, I'll just defer wait. till then. I'll just ask about it then. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Linda. Okay, let's move on to item number five on the agenda. Uh, Mr. McCord, it's about local government planning advisory committee. Got the floor. <clears throat> Yes, Council, this is uh, actually two items. It's a resolution and an ordinance. Uh, the resolution is essentially a request to the state of Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development to deactivate the city's regional planning authority. We currently have a planning region that surrounds portions of the city just beyond the city limit boundary. And uh, the other part of this is, uh, would be, of course, to deactivate the Regional Plan Authority. Uh, I actually wrote that on here twice, but 
the actual part would then change the composition and that as part of this request to the state to change uh, from a regional municipal planning commission and then we would be authorized by statute to, without having to get approval by the state, to then create a municipal planning commission. Now the planning commission met last night and recommended approval of a similar ordinance, uh, or excuse me, a similar resolution to, to move forward with that. And the reason that we're, at, we're doing this primarily is because the county had adopted a new zoning resolution last summer, and I think I mentioned that earlier in the other uh, item number. And so the county now has the professional staff to manage growth within their boundaries. Um, so by doing that, they essentially took away the zoning authority that the city had in the planning region. What we do now have is still subdivision regulation authority, but that creates a lot of confusion for not only the staff, but certainly property owners and people who are interested in developing or using their properties in that area. They would be subject to the city's uh, subdivision regulations, but having to design that subdivision in accordance with the county zoning. Now the city of Maryville did something very similar to this. They were in the same situation where the county uh, took over the zoning authority uh, over in Blount County on um, areas that were identified as a planning region and they went through the same process that we're asking y'all to consider as well and why and if you approve this that we'll be asking the state to consider if you do approve this resolution it will be forwarded then to and this ordinance uh, it would be then forwarded to the state and the state local government planning and advisory committee would then make a decision as to whether or not to uh, relinquish or deactivate the regional planning authority and uh, take away the regional municipal planning commission. So what the ordinance does essentially creates a municipal planning commission. And the municipal planning commission is composed of members that are appointed by the mayor and uh, the, of course the council member from persons who live inside the city. Right now we have, because we are a regional planning commission, we have one member who is a resident outside the city, but in the planning region. And that person would be uh, replaced by a person who has actually already been appointed, is just waiting for this action to be completed before they take office. Okay, Bill, is there someone that would like to ask Bill a question? Oh, uh, I'd just like to make a motion to approve it on the council. We got a motion by Councilman Overton. Do we have a second? I second it. Got a second by Councilman uh, John D. Alexander. Uh, this is open for more discussion. Anybody like to ask a question? Let's move for the vote. Ms. Kittrell. Vice Mayor Fennell. Yes. Councilman Alexander. Yes. Councilman Fan. Yes. Councilwoman George. Yes. Councilman Hayes? Yes. Councilwoman Love? Yes. And Councilman Overton? Yes. Seven eyes, zero nays. Thank you, Ms. Kittrell. Now let's move to ordinance or item on agenda number six, ordinance. Uh, Zach uh, Wilkinson, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, this is a continued discussion over ordinance rewriting the existing solid waste code. Um, like we discussed at the last work session, it really doesn't change a lot as far as uh, in functionality. Um, it does move some of the more operational uh, related items into a separate document um, and just kind of cleans up some of the language that's there. Um, th there is one section of it, though, that I wanted to have a little bit deeper discussion on, and that's uh, section... 14.9, which establishes the collection and service fees for um, the Environmental Services Department. And as y'all know, um, the Environmental Services Department is funded through that collection fee. Right now, that collection fee is $12 per can per month. Um, right now, that fee is adequate to cover pretty much our garbage cost, um, but through as the years of as, growth has occurred, um, the, our brush pickup service has declined and 
will continue to decline if we keep that right. Um, we've kind of allocated all our resources towards garbage pickup and brush pickup is kind of a second priority. So uh, in your package, you'll find I've put together kind of three different options of what we can do regarding specifically the brush pickup. Um, so I know that's something that a lot of y'all do get calls about and questions about, especially in the spring and uh, after storms and stuff when we our route times are a little bit longer than usual. Um, so option one is just keeping the existing uh, rate that we have. Um, if we do that, brush pickup level of service will continue to decline as uh, as we keep on growing as a city, uh, more demands are placed on the garbage pickup side of the operation. And, uh, and so we'll be pulling from the brush side to the garbage side. Um, option two is funding, uh, put I guess funding some of the brush pickup through uh, the general fund. Um, some cities do do this. Uh, I would recommend against it um, just because it, it adds a layer of complication um, that I don't think we really want to deal with. And then option three is what I would recommend. Um, and that is raising the existing uh, fee up to $16 per can per month. Um, I know that that, that will allow us the adequate revenue to beef up the brush pickup program a little bit. And also, um, I mean, we, we expect nothing's been told officially, but we do expect some of our tipping fees for garbage to go up in the future, uh, in the coming years. I mean, right now, uh, the resource authority with, with where we take our garbage, um, they're experiencing a ton of growth and I know they're, they're making plans to try to accommodate some of that growth. And uh, I mean, uh, what that means is some of that uh, cost will be, um, will trickle, trickle down to us and which will result in probably higher tipping fees in the future. Um, so it'll help kind of head that off as well. So um, like I said, with option three, it'd be great or establishing a $16 per can per month fee, which is a $4 increase. Then also, um, it would also allow the option for non-environmental services customers to get brush pickup at the cost of $150 a load. Um, right now, we only provide that service for environmental service customers. Um, and we've had a lot of requests to uh, provide that service for people that don't necessarily use our trash service. So that would allow us and that $150 a load would cover our cost um, for providing that service for non-environmental service customers. Um, and that being said, I'll try to Zach, answer uh, Zach, right. if, if this if this was to pass, when would the sixteen dollars go into effect? Well, um, I guess I, I would recommend making it going into effect uh, effective our new budget year, which would be uh, July one. Um, I, I think it probably makes sense just to hold off and make the, the increase effective at that point. Okay, thank you. And can I can I say something too? Um, yes, Craig, go ahead. Yeah, Zach and I talked a little bit today. We we got, you know, as y'all know, trash in our area. Um, being on the resource authority board, we have increased over the last ten years. We have doubled our tonnage, and the last that's just last ten years. So yes, we are coming up with an expansion, and we just got some numbers last night for the first time which is going to be around probably close to $17 million for an expansion, which us as the resource authority board and the resource authority is going to have to fund. Um, so what he's saying is tipping fees. Yes. I mean, they will go up. They are going to go up. There's no doubt about that. Um, I don't know how much they're going to go up. We probably will know a little bit more within two months. That's why I would like to see if we don't care. I mean, I hate to vote on this right now. I mean, cause we might need to, we, we might not need to go up as much, but we might need to go up more. I don't know, but I'd like to see us put this off for at least another month if we could, if that's not too late, Zach. No, that, I mean, that'd be fine. Um, and once we got a better idea what those fees are, we can run the numbers and and make sure they make sense. Um, and then, uh, yeah. And hopefully we'll have them in time to where we can budget accordingly for next year's physical budget. We're going through that, that preparation right now, but yeah, we can, uh, 
defer it until we we know um, some at least there, there's there's a lot more there, yeah and there's a lot more that you know that that that's going on with the resource authority that that might help us out too so that's coming up too so you know there's a lot more that we'll know within a month or two so if you don't mind I'd like to see us kind of just put that off and not not really vote on that now maybe wait maybe bring it up in another month you know before that way we got time to put it on for the next year's budget definitely no it makes sense um I'll uh, I'll just be looking to uh keep an eye ear open for latest on the resource authority and bring it back to y'all or, or somebody will bring it back to you at that point Zach I got so, a question for you Yes, sir. Great. How has the uh, fuel cost in the past reflected the cost of the tipping fee? Um, I mean, the tipping fee, I, honestly, I don't know how it's reflected. I, I mean, it has to factor in. I know, um, I mean, as far as the, the rate that we charge for the $12 per camp per month, um, that was established back when fuel costs were probably a lot higher, honestly, than, that, than they are now. So we've been fortunate. Fuel hasn't been an issue for us now on the on the tipping fee side. I don't know if Craig has any insight on that or. Um, yeah, I mean, Steve, Steve, what it is, is like, we don't, we don't, our fee is set, what, at 44, right, Zach? I think we talked yes, about that today, $44 a ton. Yes, sir. That's, that's set. I mean, we don't increase that just because the gas goes up or anything like that or, or the cost of it. So it's set until we change that fee, until we say we're going to change that fee to $50 a ton. Right. Like, like we were looking at last night at our meeting, we were looking, yeah, gas went up a little bit. I think it went up, I can't remember how much from, from last month, you know, so it did. So yeah, we take that in consideration, but we, I don't, when's the last time, Zach, that we've increased the fee, tipping fee? Not since I've been around, so six years it's, plus. It's probably been, yeah, it's probably been, what, 10 years at least? Yeah. My guess, it was probably last time was whenever the last time the environmental services fee was increased. Yeah. And the cost of business has gone up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, whether it's fuel, equipment has, I, mean, I can tell you the cost of a truck has gone up a hundred thousand dollars in my six years here, um, just for an yeah. automatic garbage truck, which is. Like so, Craig, you, th you think you have more information to uh, feel more comfortable uh, about the? Yeah, uh, another, uh, another, yeah give, give me another month. Give us the month, yeah, because we should have some information more more coming. Let's put it that way, because we just found this out last night. I mean, our cost was almost double what we thought it was going to be. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. You you making a motion to have this deferred? I want to hand up first. Yes. I, I just want to make a couple of comments. One, um, um, I'm very, very grateful to Mr. Wilkinson for working on this because, as you know, he left employment with the city of Gallatin a week ago. Um, so we really appreciate you continuing to work on this. And, and like he said, somebody will bring it back in a month. Um, I appreciate his looking forward and um, trying to figure out how to responsibly fund this. A couple of things I do want to mention is that I do feel like we need to look at the bulk item pickup, potentially limit that to one bulk pickup a year per resident and charge for people that routinely, you know, that have um, regular bulk pickups. Um, same on large brush collection. I want to see us continue to do routine brush collection because I think it keeps our, our streets and our yards looking nice, but I know that sometimes they pick up very, very, very large loads. And um, I think that they should have the, the um, authority to fund those large loads that are more than whatever they gauge is an appropriate, you know, just brush pile. And um, I don't know what was the other thing that I was going to ask on. Um, and I do um, support charging the larger fees for the non-environmental services customers. So I think that's it. Oh. Uh Thank you, Mayor. I like Thanks, this Mayor. little hand little thing up here. That's pretty neat. I just found it out. Uh, John, I got one question. Let me ask one first, Councilman Howard. Is that okay with you? Yes, sir. Okay, Zach. Uh, unrelated trash uh, little comment that I have is my phone got a couple of texts here just a second ago. I know that we're having a hard time with the inmates because of COVID, 
and I, I see trash on the side of the road in places, I would just like to say to citizens, please try to pick it up. I do try to do your part, try to keep our city clean. So we take pride in our city. That's it. Councilman Overton. Zach, I, and I guess it's a question for Zach, but, and I just had somebody text me and ask me this, but in a, in a condominium complex where they got trash, but then, but they would not have any brush. How do you adjust that? Where you, where you're not charging those folks for brush? We don't. Um, the, if, so that, that, uh, that fee set per trash can and, and okay. uh, it is, if you're paying so much per, for your trash can, it's covering brush pickup and environment. Okay. And brush pickup. You, answer, you, answer, you answered my question. It's not really any different than somebody lives in a yard without trees. Right. So. You answered my question. And I don't have any in my yard. So. Okay. Nobody else has raised their hand. I don't see no raised hand symbol on there I yet. I just want to say one thing, and that is to agree with Sean about picking up your own trash when you don't throw it out. And don't expect some the city or anybody else to come along and pick up after you. That's the truth. Yes, y'all are. Most people are grown and ought to know that. Well, if you haven't seen the insert in the utility bill this month, I think the whole newsletter is pretty much dedicated to trying to um, get people to take some responsibility for the litter in our community. I think, Mr. Overton, you mentioned briefly the inmate challenge, but I'd like to expound on that because I don't think people realize that typically the city has several inmate crews um, that, that pretty much pick up trash year round. And for over a year now, we've had no inmate crews that can pick up trash year round. And Public Works um, employees have been working really hard on picking up trash when they're not doing all the other things that they do. And I know that TDOT, I've seen them, um, their crews in town picking up trash, but it's ridiculous that there's trash anywhere in our city because that trash doesn't grow there. Somebody actually puts it there and it takes all of us to do that. One of the things that I'm also going to do, and this is for your information and, and we'll give some warning, I think, to the people who are going to get these letters, but I am actually going to be sending out a letter to all of our establishments in the city that serve food because, um, you know, like food to go, because we have some um, entities that provide trash receptacles and some that do not. And I know it's an aggravation. I know it is um, an expense, but um, I really appreciate those places that serve food to go that do provide trash cans. And I think that um, they all have a responsibility to provide receptacles. And I think that will help to reduce the trash. The other piece of this is that the police department has been working for quite some time um, addressing the hauling of refuge. They've been, you know, stopping trucks, had it, heading to the resource authority and telling them that their trucks are supposed to be covered, but they have not um, covered their trash appropriately and warning them that they will be ticketed if they continue to do that. And I'm sorry, I, I think I, I said Mr. Overton said that, but I think it was actually um, Vice Mayor Fennell. I apologize. Okay. Anybody else like to raise their hand? Mr. Alexander's got his hand raised. I thought you'd be proud of me. I got All right, John. Raised. I see it. I appreciate that. I really do. Go ahead. I thought I was doing something. I was so excited about it. You just overlooked my little hand. Thank you, John. You just on the far left of the screen. Uh, I, I just want to uh, mention to Zach, uh, maybe be aware of, you know, when it comes to uh, brush pickup, if, say, for instance, you come by my house every week and I got uh, brush out there every week. I may be doing a sideline job and bring it to my house for y'all to pick up. Let, how will that factor in? The way I understood it is so uh, technically um, we're picking up brush that comes straight off the lot of that customer. Um, we're not supposed to be picking it up if it's coming from a if say you had a commercial tree cutter bringing all the stuff they're trimming to their lot. We do run into that, and uh, we I'm try to work with them to let them know. But um, okay, technically, we want that brush to come from the lot that we're picking it up from for that paying customer. Well, Great. Because I, I'm, I'm known uh, some of that to happen. So I just want us to be mindful of it. You know, nobody should have brush every week unless, right. yeah. uh, you know, going on. Okay, and thank we, we work closely with the property maintenance department to help kind of we those culprits out and they they're very helpful to kind of okay. 
Good point. Address some of those issues. So uh, I, I think we all collectively agreed with Councilman Hayes as far as uh, um, deferring this right here. I don't think there's no vote required on it, right, Ms. McCauley? No, you don't have to vote to defer it um, if you're not moving it forward. Okay, here we go to uh, item number seven. This is Rachel Nichols, and this is about appropriating federal grant to police department. Ms. Nichols, please. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. The next two items are appropriating two different grants that the police department has received. Um, I think that mayor actually included these awards in her state of the city back in October, but the federal government has just now gotten around to finalizing their budget. So um, you've been notified of these grants, you've approved them, we're just now getting the money and we need to appropriate the money. Motion to approve. approve. We've got a motion by Councilman Overton. Uh, we have Councilwoman Love that seconded it properly. It's open for discussion. Any discussion, raise your hand. Yeah, we just want to hear Bill Sarl say something. So, Bill, can you comment on it? Uh, the good thing about these grants is it's not costing any, there's no new money. It's, they're, they're both, the uh, first grant is uh, in-kind money, and the second one is, is completely straight federal money. Thanks, Bill. No money up there. Anyone else? We got a motion, got a second. Uh, Connie Kitchell, roll call, please. Vice Mayor Finnell. Yes. Councilman Alexander. Yes. Councilman Thayen. Yes. Councilwoman George. Yes. Councilman Hayes. Yes. Councilwoman Love. Yes. And Councilman Overton. Yes. Seven nine zero nays. And that was on ordinance seven and eight, correct, Jimmy? Yes. Okay. All right. Ordinance number nine, Ms. Nichols, uh, for fires, all station number three, Ms. Nichols. Yes, sir. The county has um, asked that we make an addition to our fire hall three to be able to house a, an ambulance and an ambulance crew. Um, the conversation started back last year sometime, and we have bid that project. Um, the low bid amount was $255,900. The county will be paying for this construction, but since it's on our property, um, we'll be the ones running the, the actual construction, but the county's going to reimburse us for the cost of it. Motion to approve. Second. We got a motion by Councilman Hayes. We got a second by Councilman Love. I think I'm correct. Over yeah. floor discussion. I got their hands raised. Seeing none, Ms. Kittrell, roll call, please. Vice Mayor Finnell. Yes. Councilman Alexander. Yes. Councilman Fan. Yes. Councilwoman George. Yes. Councilman Hayes. Yes. Councilwoman Love. Yes. And Councilman Overton. Yes. Seven I zero nays. Thank you. All right, guys. Ms. Nichols, uh, this is about uh, item number 10 on the uh, Agenda to Scott Woodard. Thank you, Vice Mayor Fennell. Um, the purpose of this ordinance is to allow the Galton Fire Department to recoup money spent in the repair of Station 3 due to a lightning strike and have those funds added back into our building maintenance and repair line. Motion to approve. Second. We got a motion by Councilman Hayes and I got Councilman John Alexander on the second right there. Do we have any hands up for <laughs> any discussion? We got one, Mayor Brown. Um, yeah, I was just, um, I, I, I just want to be clear on that. I mean, the repairs have been made or this is going to cover the repairs? No, ma'am, the, the repairs have been made and we paid for it out of our repair and maintenance line. And this is okay. the money's coming back. Thank you, thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right, do we have any more hands to raise? Seeing none, Ms. Kittrell's call to vote. Vice Mayor Fennell? Yes. Councilman Alexander? Yes. Councilman Fan? Yes. Councilwoman George? Yes. Councilman Hayes? Yes. Councilwoman Love? Yes. Councilman Overton. Yes. Seven eyes, zero nays. 
Thank you, Ms. Kittrell. Guys, I'm moving you along pretty quick, but I look down here, number 11, we got Bill McCord. Bill McCord, you got the floor. Tony Flood. Miss Flood, right yes. Now. Be quicker. Miss Flood. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and jump in on this one. This is a request for, for approval of a resolution to create an additional planner one position in the planning department because of our workload. Uh, we currently have nine positions and one is vacant. We are asking for the vacant position not to be filled, but to be replaced with this planner one position. It will be about 10,000, a little more than $10,000 more per year in salary and about 1700 and so dollars per year more in fringe benefits. So uh, we need this resolution to authorize that and that will allow us to begin hiring. We've, we've uh, had some money in reserve obviously because we haven't had that administrative assistant one position uh, most of all this year. So um, we, we will be fine this year and we'll include that planner one position in lieu of the assistant uh, uh, administrative assistant position next year. Motion okay, to Bill, Ms. Flood, would you like to elaborate on this, Amy? It's a reclassification and uh, he is in need of that position. He is. Motion to approve. Yes, in my okay. opinion, yes. All, All right, right, guys, slow down, slow down. We got a motion by Councilman Hayes. Who seconded that? I did. Correct. All right. We got a so, second by Councilman Fan. Now let's open our hands for discussion. We got Paige first and second is Jimmy. Yeah, I, I, I was just going to um, jump in here and say that um, to be clear, this will have a budgetary impact in the coming year, but realize that there is funding um, that was dedicated um, from the Facebook project to support those departments that are, you know, carrying the lion's share of that work as a result of it. And planning certainly has a lot of demands on them. And I think that this is a really good move for, um, for the proper production of that department. So that's it. Councilman Overton, you're next to well, you. Well, she answered my question. I just thought we were going to hold off to July before we created any more positions and hired anybody else, and, and, but apparently not. So. Well, I think... What? planning circumstances. Um, I mean, he's been without a person for quite some time. And rather than hiring someone in that role and putting, you know, another one on the table, I think that this is a, a smarter move for the long term. Mayor, what, is it April that our budget meeting start? No, no they're actually going to start in March. We did that schedule today. Um, I think they're starting like maybe March 17th. Okay. All right, Miss uh, Eileen. I didn't see your hand being raised. Or yes, my question. Thank you. Um, my question is the ten thousand dollar increase. Is that because we're looking for someone with more credit with more credentials? Is that the reason? It's well, a position that. Go ahead, Connie. It's a position that on the salary grid uh, would start out paying more. It's a higher paying position. Okay, got it. Sounds like there's more responsibilities. Definitely. Okay, do we have any more questions? Ms. Flood or Mr. Uh, Bill McCord, the planner? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Kittrell, call the vote. Vice Mayor Pinnell? Yes. Councilman Alexander? Yes. Councilman Fan? Yes. Councilwoman George? Yes. Councilman Hayes? Yes. Craig. Councilman yes. Hayes. Thank you. Councilwoman Love. Yes. And Councilman Overton. Yes. Seven nine zero nays. All right, Ms. Kitchell. Now we'll move into our license item on the agenda. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Uh, Susan McCauley, City Attorney. Yes. As you heard earlier tonight, uh, the county is looking to add on to Fire Hall 3. And we've been discussing that for quite some time. What I have before you is a resolution to approve an interlocal agreement that the county law director and I have both approved. It just sets out the parameters saying that the county is going to pay for the construction, but the addition once it's added to the building will be the city's. The city will be required to maintain that property going forward. There will be no exchange of employees and all the 
parameters that are set out in the agreement that's in your packet. And I just ask that you move this on to council. We got a motion by Councilman Overton and a second was properly done by Councilman John D. Alexander. Now we open for discussion. Ms. Mayor Brown, you got your hand up. Are you wishing to speak? No, I didn't take it down from before. I apologize. Okay, thank you, Ms. Madam <laughs> Mayor. Uh, open for discussion. We don't see any right here. Ms. Kittrell, roll call, please. Vice Mayor Fennell. Yep. Councilman Alexander. Yes. Councilman Fan. Yes. Councilwoman George. Yes. Councilman Hayes. Yes. Councilwoman Love. Yes. And Councilman Overton. Yes. Seven eyes, zero nays. All right, guys, that concludes our regular agenda items, and now we're going to move down to other business. Somebody wants something on other business? I, I got one. And Wait a minute, I'm Jimmy. To, I'm going to ask the mayor first. Mayor, do you have the uh, three petitions to close streets off of the chamber? Okay, I, I'll defer to the mayor then. Let her do it. Did you have something else? You're welcome to go ahead. No, it's just those three, the parking lot and the closures for the chamber. That's all I was going to bring up. Okay. Yeah, I have them sitting right here. And so if it's okay, Vice Mayor Fennell, I'll go ahead with these. Yes, ma'am. I have three street closures. They're from the Galton Chamber. The first, well, the first two actually are related to the Galton Shamrock Run. One is for um, the closure of the downtown Galton City Hall parking lot. And that is from 5 a.m. until 10 a.m. And, um, and also with that is the closure of uh, Main Street from Locust to Hartsville Pike, Locust from Main Street to Broadway, Franklin from Locust to College, Main Street from Main Street to Craft, Craft from Craft to Hartsville Pike, Hartsville Pike from Craft to Main Street. I know that you've got a perfect visual from that description. Exactly. I do have signatures from all the department heads. Um, this is, um, is this the same route that they've been doing same, each year? Same route always. We've done last year, except we started the chamber now instead of starting at the high school. And the streets will be closed from 6.45 to 9.30. Correct. So um, that is uh, their request. And so those are the two um, submissions. I think you are okay to vote on them together. I don't think one could happen without the other for the- oh, approved. Second. We got a motion on the floor by Councilman Overton. It's properly been seconded by Councilwoman Love. Now we got the floor open for discussion. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Kittrell, call for the vote. Vice Mayor Fennell. Yes. Councilman Alexander. Yes. Councilman Fan. Yes. Councilwoman George. Yes. Councilman Hayes. Yes. Councilwoman Love. Yes. And Councilman Overton. Yes. Seven I zero nays. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Mayor, Madam Mayor. Mayor. The second one, or actually the third request from the chamber is for an event on 918. It is for a farm to table dinner that the chamber is sponsoring. They're asking to close the L of the downtown square. Um, uh, I do not have times on here. Is uh, it the 18th or the 25th, Mayor? It start? says 918-2021. And it does not have starting and ending times. Um, it's not have starting and ending times. You want me to bring this one back? We have yes. time. Yes, we got time. Let's bring it back because I want to clarify that date. Okay, and I want to, and I think we need to have times on there before we vote on that. Um, the only other item that I have for for um, your contemplation and potentially consideration vote is that Governor Lee is extend, extending the. Um, virtual meeting allowance. Um, I don't remember what he, if, if there's a deadline on this order, um, Ms. Hyde McCauley might recall. I have I just saw that it was coming, but the order actually came today and I haven't seen that. And so it's up to this council to decide if you're ready to return to in-person meetings or if you wanna continue virtually. I know that um, they are still working on installing the new equipment in our chambers. Um, I think, um, I think Mr. Henschel felt like in about two weeks or or by three weeks that we should be good and everything should be working well up there, but we haven't had any tests and everything's not fully installed yet. So um, we could meet together as early as next week, but he felt like things would go smoother if we could wait a few more weeks, but ultimately it's up to you all. 
Mayor, I read that and I think it's just through the next 30 days through the through the end of March. So I would say let's just keep on voting, I mean, meeting electronically through March to give uh, Mr. Henschel and uh, time to get our, our uh, room ready. Second. We got a motion on the floor for Councilwoman. Woman, Linda Lovely, and uh, second by Councilman Overton. Now we open for discussion. Any discussion there? Greg, I see your hand up. Would you like to say something? Strange. No, I don't. I guess no. where how did I put my hand up? I didn't know how I did that. Okay. <laughs> Any more discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Kittrell, call the vote. Vice Mayor Pinnell? Yes. Councilman Alexander? Yes. Councilman Fan? Yes. Councilwoman George? Yes. Councilman Hayes? Yes. Councilwoman Love? Yes. And Councilman Overton? Yes. Seven eyes, zero nays. Mayor, if, if I could, I just spoke to Ms. Baker. She said that events on September the 18th and we need it from five to eight and they'll start setting up around noon. The farm to table. So it need to be from noon to eight? Yes. Well, the events actually from five to eight, they're just going to start sitting up around noon. So, but she also wanted me to remind everybody that whoever's going to be in the shamrock run, that we have a lot of potholes and be real careful. So, we have some streets that might not be completely done by the end and be careful with the potholes that's out there. So, anybody else? I have something on um... Mayor. Do we need to vote on that or you want to wait? Um, it, it's up to you guys. The only, Let's my wait. only apprehension here is that the signatures, you know, from the people around the square, um, well, I know the one that I'd be most concerned about is the one that's open, which is that 106 public square. And I think she's on the committee. So I guess I don't have to worry about that. Right. Yeah. Let's just vote on it. Get it over with. Yeah, we can vote on it. Um, it may come back to you because I know that there does have to be approval to have beer at this, but that would be a different issue later on. So motion to approve the event. Second. We got a motion by Councilman Jimmy Overton, a second by Councilwoman Linda Love. Now it's over for discussion. Any discussion? Seeing none, Ms. Kittrell, roll call. Vice Mayor Pinnell? Yes. Councilman Alexander? Yes. Councilman Fan? Yes. Councilwoman George? Yes. Councilman Hayes? Yes. Councilwoman Love? Yes. And Councilman Overton? Yes. Seven nine zero nays. Thank y'all. Okay, we're still on other business. Councilwoman Elaine? Eileen? <laughs> I'll get it. I promise you, Eileen. I think of the song and it hits me right. Come on, Eileen. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I would like to point out that on the uh, city council website, my phone number is not listed. And I have had uh, people saying that they're not able to reach me and uh, leaving messages and I'm not receiving messages. So I don't know where the messages are going. However, um, I just want the public to know that I'm very, very responsive in returning calls or uh, emails. So um, is there a way to get that fixed? Mr. Henschel will take care of that. Perfect, thank you. All right, I've got one thing I'd like to say. I had somebody text me, a little, two people text me, uh, spotted Bill McCord out on 109 cleaning trash up himself on a weekend. We need to give him the Good citizen track trash picker up or war. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm gonna add to that, Mr. Fennell, because it goes even beyond that. Mr. McCord walked to and from work last week and he does not live close. He well, lives many miles from here. Wow, one lady just asked me on here if he was. Hey, a he don't live that far. <laughs> how, how, it, it's like th it, probably four or five miles, isn't it? No, it's not that far. Mr. McCord, how far do you live from City Hall? About two and a half miles. Yeah, okay. there you go. So wow. he walked five miles today. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's awesome. what you used to walk to school every day, didn't you, Paige? Five miles yeah, yeah, to school yeah. every no. day. <laughs> Bill, am, am I am I okay with giving this lady your phone number? She wanted to know if you was single or not. <laughs> I'm single. Okay. okay. All right. Moving on. Let's move on. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Department head reports. Right. Department heads. 
Hold on, Sean. I have my little hand up. Okay, I see you, Sean. Hey, you on, I, just, I just learned how to do it, and, and you got to show us a little hand. <laughs> Councilman John D. on the queue. Uh, on a serious note, I just want to uh, everybody be in prayer for uh, uh, Vice Principal. Can you all hear me? Yes. Uh, Vice Principal Andrew Turner lost his brother, uh, Brother Robert Turner. And also, uh, Elroy Milton passed away, and also Miss Clara Vlees and uh, Daryl Johnson passed away. But on last week, the Sumner County Board of Education lost a dear, dear person in the form of Miss uh, Betty Johnson. And we certainly want to keep her family in prayer and pray for her husband, uh, uh, Brother Dave uh, Johnson. They are members of uh, Nashville Road Church of Christ. So keep them in, keep all these families in your prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Now department head reports. Do you have any department head would like to add to this meeting? Seeing none, I'll entertain. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. McCord, we got you. Yeah, brief, quickly, I uh, just want to give you an update on a couple of things. The uh, urban transportation planning grant that y'all authorized us to apply for with other cities and the county, we were awarded that by TDOT. Uh, it's, we're just one of many partners in that. So we'll be working on that. It's a, Countywide bike ped plan. And so TDOT will be administering that. Uh, also, the local government planning advisory committee made a decision. That's a, the state advisory committee from the Economic and Community Development Department. And they approved the urban growth boundary change swap with Hendersonville. That's only the property that includes uh, a little bit of the Westfield property, the Southeastern Corporation owns as well as the right-of-way of Big Station Camp Boulevard uh, between the railroad and Big Station Camp Creek. It doesn't mean that it's in the city, at least not yet, but it does mean that it's eligible for annexation now and zoning. Uh, also, uh, the MPO adopted the long-range transportation plan, the 2045 plan, and uh, Gallatin area has several projects included in that. And, if you want to call and talk to me about that, I'll be glad to talk to you about those projects that are included in that uh, new transportation plan. And I'll be preparing a uh, traffic volumes chart update for each of y'all. I know traffic's been an issue. You get complaints about it. So this will give you a, an idea of how many uh, daily vehicle trips are traveling certain segments of roadway in the Gallatin area. And it also gives you a level of service comparison so you can see how the road's functioning based on uh, levels of service. So that's all I have. All right. Guys, it's been a relatively long one this evening. I appreciate y'all hanging in there. And Councilman Alexander, I just want to tell you your words of wisdom on how to, for me to become a better councilman does not go unnoticed. So I appreciate your words there. The last, uh, last motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. There we go. All the say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye y'all. See you later. Y'all come aye. back down. You hear? <laughs> <laughs>